This is Sarah holding her favorite. Who is that? Who is that? Purple. Purple. Ava, who do you have? Light pink. Light pink. And Nathan, who do you have? Green. Green. And those are our little pockets. Look how tiny these are. Look how tiny they are. All right, I'm going to go through everybody. And look. How cute. We'll probably take the kids out here in a minute so that I can hear myself think. Jasmine and Beans, Teddy Bear, Pocket Petite, Golden Doodles. These are the tiny bunch. Pockets are the smallest size that we do. They mature between eight and 15 pounds, and then our petites are between 16 and 20 pounds. So basically the petites are, they, they start where the pockets leave off. Hey girls, hey girls, everybody's shaking. Everybody's shaking. We're not sure what we want to do in here. No, except for you. Hi, buddy. So guys, we're four weeks old. We are at the halfway point already. In, in, in four more weeks, they go home. So we've got some weight to gain. And we have to um, eventually wean from mama. There's a lot of things to happen in the next four weeks. Hi, hi, come here, buddy. So in this litter, we have three boys and six girls. Girl dominate this, uh, this particular litter. So I'm gonna go through the boys. We're just gonna go through everybody and then watch them play. Hey, and then I'm gonna let my, um, my littles in here to play with the babies. So let's start with you. Let's start with you. This is orange collar boy. He is a wavy, soft cotton. In just a minute, mate. And then we have our black collar boy. He is a curly. And then we have, uh, now right now, I believe that these are gonna be closer to the 16 pound mark. And then we have a little pocket boy the only pocket boy, dark green collar boy. He is definitely stay, staying smaller. And he is a curly and he has that little chocolate nose. Are you cute? Do you know you're cute? He's, he's chunky. He may be little and the only reason he would weigh a little more is because he has a big tummy. All right, guys, I'm going to try to do this in as little segments as possible. When I have the littles in here, I do a lot of stopping, so I'm sorry about that. Um, anyway, little uh, dark green is chunky fat, but still very, very little. So he's going to be considered in the pocket. Look at him. <laughs> are you a cutie? Are you a cutie? Yes, you are. Look at you guys. Are the boys loving on me? Boys are loving on me. I don't have anything to feed you. I don't. There's no teeth, so that, that feels cute. At this stage, that's cute. So these are our three boys right here. Yeah. And look at the little girl here. <laughs> All right, let's go over the girls. I'm gonna start with the two petite size girls. So closer to the 16 pound mark. And we have dark pink collar girl. And she is a soft cotton wavy. Yeah, I'll get her, I'll get her. She's coming back. Sarah's worried about lime green walking over there. And then we have our other wavy girl, which is turquoise girl. You can see a little difference in their snouts. So pink has a little bit broader snout here. Otherwise, they're pretty identical. Yes. So those are our soft cotton wavy petite girls. I'm gonna call these the twins. 
Yes, because we do look very, very similar, don't we? Yes. Now, can you see that? Can you see the, the broadness in dark pink collar girl's nose? Oh, yeah, there's a fly over there, yes. You can, it's, it's hot. So if you go outside, you have to come back in when you get hot. Are you going? All right, let me get your shoes on. Okay, sorry guys. Hopping all over the place here today. It's, um, you always, you can tune into me for the weather report, can't you? It's, it's really hot. It's already hot this morning. And so, yeah, the kids are in and out. It's, it's one of those things where they want to play outside, but then they're just like, oh my gosh, the dread, the dread of a Texas summer. So that is the main difference between these two, the broad. And then you can see just a little more narrowing there on our little twins, our pockets. I mean, our petites. All right, now we're going to go to the pocket size girls. And I'm going to start with the largest of the pockets, which is our yellow collar girl. And she has a curly coat. Hi, baby. And they are so small, guys. They're going to grow into, I mean, right now they look like, you know, a, a, a newborn regular size golden doodle. This is, this is how tiny we are. I'll back up a bit here. Yeah, super tiny. Chiquita agrees with me. She just, <laughs> Chiquita's over here too. Anyway, so this is Yellow Collar Girl. She's a curly coat. And she's a pocket size. And next up, we have Light Pink Collar Girl, who's even smaller. And Light Pink Collar Girl has a chocolate nose, don't you? Yes. And she is also a curly coat. Not as curly. I'm feeling more cotton in there. So we're going to have to watch her a little bit. Yeah. You got little fluff fluff. There you go. Can I take the fluff off? Sorry. Sorry, baby. Here we go. Got it. I got it. All good. I have a thing about these, these um, collars leaving fluff marks. It's one of those things. I just have to stop. Look at Look at you sleeping. Look at you sleeping. <laughs> Did I wake you up? <laughs> I woke you up. Okay, next. I would say the next smallest is actually purple. And she is the darkest girl. A super dark red. Purple collar girl. Yes. And look, you got a fluff mark on your leg. That's all right. That's all right. I'll leave it alone for now. I'll leave it alone. And then the smallest, are you going after me? What is on my hands that you guys are interested in? I'm trying to think, what What did I eat or touch? The smallest of the pockets is Lime Green Collar Girl. Hi, Pumpkin Noodle. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And she is a curly. So um, the only wavy girls that we have are the two petite size, which is dark pink and turquoise. Those are the wavy. Everybody else is gonna be more on your curly. I do watch the pockets though, because some of the curly kind of goes away with the pockets as they mature. So we're just gonna have to watch them and, and see what happens to these coats. I would say um, right now though, they all really do feel like a curly. Hello, look at that little chocolate nose. Little chocolate nose. So the two, Green boy, yes. I'm like, I miss, I miss play screen boy. So yeah, dark green and light pink are the two chocolate noses in this litter. That is something that our beans is passing on. I absolutely love this. Oh, and somebody had pooped over here beside me. Beware, watch out. Oh, are you going down? Are you going down already? Uh-oh, we lost the pillow. Pillow fell. Let's see if I can get them to walk around a little more for you. Yeah, because right now they just want to huddle and go to sleep. Yeah, we know you walk around. So guys, now that we're entering four weeks, we're going to go ahead and send out directions to the farm for those that are picking up. For those that are flying, we'll need to go ahead and start talking about your preferred airport, um, times, what we do, um, 
with our flight nannies. Our flight nannies fly standby. So it's important that you understand that they, when they search for a flight, they're looking at the absolute best chance of them to actually get out on time. If for some reason, uh, for instance here, um, recently we had a lot of bad weather, so we had some flight cancellations, which put people on our flights, and that took away a lot of, they would, especially if they oversell a flight, then we don't have a chance to fly. So um, what they do is they, they research the best one that has seats available, and they will get on that flight. If for some reason there's a delay, then they'll take the very next flight, or take a different connection or something like that. But we anticipate all those things. So your, your carrier that your puppy is riding in has extra potty pads, their food bowl, their feed, all that kind of stuff. Leash collar, everything that they need to make it through that flight just fine. And um, these are tiny little puppies. It's like a, a, a full-size apartment when they're in one of those little carriers. So that's a little bit about flying. Um, and like I said, you'll get your, those coming, we'll get your directions to the farm and then our puppy picking instructions because picking is coming up in just a few weeks. It's gonna be fast. So what we do for picking is I'm going to send you temperament testing results the Wednesday before and extra video. And then we do our picking virtually and um, we do, uh, most everybody picks through the video and the pictures that we post. And I will text you at your picking appointment and you let me know what puppy you've chosen. For those that are really having a hard time deciding and need to FaceTime or Zoom, we absolutely can do that. We can, um, I can send you a Zoom link or we can go ahead and FaceTime. Yes, where are you going? Where are you going? See, are there any squeakies? Where's my squeaky toys? We're getting low on squeaky toys. The squeaker, the, the longhorn squeaker died. Oh dear, everybody gets a Longhorn in their puppy packet, our Texas Longhorn. Um, they're a little darker brown than this now. Since COVID, they started a different fabric. Look at you going down. Look at you going down. Huh? Is it, are, you, are you whining? No, it's yellow, I think. Is it yellow? No, 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 not yellow. It's Blackie. It's Blackie Collar Boy. There you are. We've got more kids coming back. I need my water, Mommy. You need your water? It's over there. Over there on the counter. Do you see it? Go get the water. And then uh, I need you to shut the door so the flies don't get in. We don't like those flies. There you go. Thank you, buddy. So, um... That's what's happening at week four. Mommy, I'm hungry. We, okay, we'll be I'm done here in a minute. Hot, oh, you mean hot? Well, come in, there's a drink over here. Mommy, it's I'm hot. Hungry. All right, we got kiddos in here now. I like this one. All right, hold her gentle, gentle. Where is purple? Where is purple? She is under here. Here she is. Oh, you're so little. Oh, oh. <laughs> Are they tiny? They're very tiny. These are so big. Yes, is that your purple? Yeah, we love purple, don't we? baby. Yeah, that's your baby. Oh, goodness. I am mama. Guys, usually when the little kids come in here, the puppies start going absolutely crazy. They love the kids. They get played with a lot by the kids. Yeah, those are their people. Okay, so week five, we're gonna be doing temperament testing and we'll send those over to you the Wednesday before picking. And so one thing you need to realize about temperament testing, we breed for uniformity in many things. So you're, you're getting very similar temperaments, but there might be a few little things that you can tell the difference between and that's going to help with some of your decision making. I know she has a little light, yeah, I know. Or she has a light nose, doesn't she? Shut the door, Nate. It's I hot, hot. Hot, 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 hot. A chocolate nose. You don't, yes, a chocolate nose. We don't want to let all that cool air out. It is nice and cool in here. We like it. Oh, goodness. Pardon you, Nate. Have I mentioned we're a circus in a zoo? A little bit. 
a little bit of a circus in a zoo. I'm out now. You want out now? Okay. I'm in here. You're going to stay in here? All right. You're going to show her the purple on that block? Okay, so the purple collar girls usually end up being incredibly toddler friendly because purple is Sarah's favorite. And that's, oh, you fell over. <laughs> oh, you fell over. <clears throat> I got you. Purple is her favorite color, so that's the color she always goes to. You want an 80? Um, so they're my five. <laughs> yes, you're five. I'm five. Yes, you are. Them. And you're two, them. yes. I'm a lot of them. You're a lot of them, you're four. No, I'm, I'm four. not them. You are not ten. I think bigger. <laughs> is Nate this money? Yes, he is four. No, I think my daddy is so are ugly. You? Although you're wearing your, your number three shirt. You're not three anymore, are you? You got bigger yeah. and older. I'm a so basically, we're just playing around. Look, she's crawling off of you. Yeah, she wants to play now. You're going to play now? And that means I'll hold this little dog. Hopefully next week they'll be running around a little more. Yeah. You're going to hold yellow now? Yeah. She's sweet, isn't she? Aw, she's licking you. I think she likes you. That's a funny sound. Do they like that sound? Yeah. So after puppy picking, then we're going to be working on the weaning process. We do that with the little ones very slowly, and we let it taper off towards the end of their stay. By the time they leave us, they will be fully weaned, but we will take our time doing it because we don't want to shock their systems or anything like that. Are you lining them up? Are you lining them up? Yeah. Little pink is over here. Oh, hi, pink. Do you have green? Yeah. Yeah. He's sweet, isn't he? Aw. Yes, you kissed him. Who do you want? You want black? Okay, you're lining them up. Okay. What you do? You're lining them up too. All right, we'll put mine green, turquoise. Is that everybody? That's everybody. So the littles walking around here doesn't make me nervous, but I get nervous if. My husband is in the area because they're like half the size of his feet. Got to learn to navigate, don't you? Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Mom, he's the biggest. He is the biggest. You're right. Black collar is the biggest. He likes you. He likes you. Aw. Him too. Yeah. Because he's so cute. Yeah, he Mommy, is. I have him both. Yes, I know you have purple. You always have purple, don't you? Yeah. I will say, if you get a purple collar, they're going to be the most gentle, laid back dog ever because they get messed with a lot. Hey, Matt, you're right. Do you need some water? There's water in the fridge. Okay. Whoa, you're moving the camera. Okay, you're gonna step on a puppy. You gotta be careful. Oh, we're going potty on the potty pad. Good job, little girl. Good job. So, yes, it turns blue. He's getting tired. Everybody else is starting to wake up and get, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing down there? Yeah? Everybody else is waking up and Orangey's going down. Trying to get them at some lively moments here for you guys. It gets difficult, especially with the little ones that are wanting to sleep. But they do play. Yeah. I want a ball. Yes, you got a ball. You're going to give it to yellow. We have to color coordinate. Yellow gets yellow. It's, you don't want green to get the ball. Look, she got it. Thank you. Yeah. 
Tiny, tiny baby trying to play with the big yellow ball. There are two green. Yeah. Should we give them to the green puppy? Here's a green, green ball for green puppy. And there, give this to the other green. Over there. See that green over there? Yeah. There you go. Good job. We'll give blue to blue. We don't have any orange. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm just out. Oh, yeah. There's no teeth. No teeth. See, we are just teddy bears. Tiny little teddy bears. Mommy, this one's We have this brown painter's paper here, guys, that gets kind of slippery. But this is what I use to keep, um, keep the floors safe in these special areas, apart from where we walk around with our shoes. Um, one thing that you need to know is when your puppy comes home, Yes, I know, but you need to you need to be gentle, gentle, gentle. When um, <laughs> is she trying to get to you? She's trying to get to you. Do you want to put purple down so that she can walk around? Yeah, I'm holding. I know you're holding her, but I I think maybe she should get down and walk a little bit. Yeah, let's just see if she wants to walk. Oh, Pinky's going up to you. Oh, Pinky likes you. Yeah. Um, and Purple's like, well, what about me? Yeah, see, now you're used to it. You're used to it. You want to be held. <laughs> okay, now we can see them together. You can see Pinky's just a little bit smaller. They're just amazing. I will say that. Um, Jasmine's been having puppies for a while now, and I'm just always amazed at these tiny little babies. And... As many as we do, um, I, I do forget how small they are and, until I'm sitting here with them. See, I'm such a tiny baby. Yes, you are. Here we go. Okay, one thing I was going to say is, um, one thing I have to realize is when your puppy comes home, they're only going to have their first set of shots. The puppies need three oh, different... Yeah. yeah, a shot. <laughs> She's not sure about that. They're gonna need three sets of shots before they um, are good to go out on like a public lawn or walkway. If you have a yard that is not visited by wildlife, a yard that is um, only your vaccinated pets go in. Yeah, I see they're sleeping. Yeah, let, we'll leave them alone for a minute. I know we're gonna. They're waking up, aren't they? We'll let we'll let them wake up naturally. Um. I'm really sorry, guys. Now you can see why talking on the phone gets difficult. It, it's, yeah. And I lose my train of thought. Anyway, they, um, a yard that you have vaccinated pets on, things like that. Um, families' yards where they, you know that their pets are vaccinated. That is okay. I would still wipe off their paws when they come in, especially if it is wet. Um, that is something you want to do. What happens is they... They will get things on their paws, and then they're going to come in, and they're going to lick their paws. And that's how they contract. Mommy, I want to do buffalo. Okay. So when they go outside, um, even in a, a yard that you're comfortable with, if it's wet, you're going to just want to wipe off those paws. Um, now, during COVID here, we learned that our vets were using Clorox wipes. That's what we use for our mamas if it's wet outside. But, um, and I know people are like, oh, why would you do that? But... The alternative, if you're having something um, that they could contract on their paws, that's you just want to get rid of that. So at least wipe it off with a with a paper towel or a towel, and make sure that they're not going to be licking that off. Um, but until that third set of shots, no, at that third set of shots, um, you want to wait about nine days after that third set of shots. Then you're, some people will get the shots and they're like, all right, we can immediately go out and play. No, you need to let their bodies do what they need to do. Their immune systems do what they need to do. Oh, does that feel good? Does that feel good? Yeah. And then, um, and then they can go out, especially you do not want to let them, am I not getting the right spot? Where do you want me to do that? Yeah. Especially you do not want to let them down in like a dog park or anything like that, public areas. That's not going to be well. 
the grocery stores, PetSmart, um, the vet. Never take your puppy in and let them be on the floor at the vet. You want to make sure that they're in a carrier. Um, even when they're older and they have their vaccinations, if they're tiny like this, put them in a carrier. You um, you don't know if a, if a puppy is there or a dog is there for that has contracted something or if they're for a well check. So you just want to be cautious, especially. Are you exhausted from all that holding? Are you exhausted? Yeah. Sarah's gone now. Now you're, now you're lonely. Now you're lonely. Oh goodness, guys. I wish you could feel the fluff. Feel the fluff. So anyway, that's just my little uh, rant here on vaccinations and making sure that you are cautious. Um, at, like I said, you have to, have, we have the first set of shots, but you're going to have two more sets of shots after you go home and then wait about nine days after that shot, uh, let the last set of shots that you get. And that's also going to contain your rabies and then they can go out in a public area. You just need to make sure they have all those boosters before they're out and about. We do not want them to contract anything, especially on this pocket size, a small, look at that small, tiny puppy that's going home at two pounds. Um, they don't have much of a fighting chance if they contract something because a lot of these things that they can contract, they cause, um, okay, they cause like diarrhea, things like that. And dehydration is, is going to be your worst enemy. So that's why we're asking you to be really cautious. If you, so let's say a lot of people that get a pocket, they get it because they're in an apartment situation or a, a townhome that has no yard or something like that. Um, these puppies are potty pad trained. They will know what to do with their potty pad and you can leave a couple potty pads in their area, which um, is like a, a little playpen area or a, an area in your house. Letting them use that potty pad, you'll still use the crate, you'll still use the potty training bells. That, you can still potty train them with that. So people ask, well, what do I do if I can't go out to a dog park? That is your alternative during those first couple weeks home. You wanna keep up the crate them having to whine and communicate to you that they have to potty, teaching them how to ring the bells when they have to potty, you're still moving in the right direction. You're just not going out on that public grass. If you do go out on that public grass, make sure you wipe their paws with disinfectant, uh, with dis disinfecting wipes. I'm just um, being extra cautious um, because we have had situations where puppies have gone home and before that third set of shots, people have taken them out to a dog park and then they do contract something. So we just wanna forewarn you, get you prepared, think ahead of time. Say, okay, well, if I can't go out, what do I do? So there's just some, some alternatives also. And I say this a lot, but I forget it. So I'm going to mark it down now. I have a favorite potty patch that I like to use. Um, my favorite favorite is super expensive, but I will, I will link some, um, Put some links below in the description box so that you can follow. Look at that, look at just how tiny. I mean, my gosh, look how tiny you are. Um, my favorite potty patches, you can also use that if you're in an apartment situation. You can still go out on a deck or in, in an area and have them use that so they get used to that um, grass field. But you're still moving in the right direction with potty training if you have a potty pad in their area. We just don't do potty pads all around the house because that will confuse them but they do know what the potty pad is in their area. So that'll at least keep them on track for their potty training. Guys, we're down. We are down for the count. So I'm gonna let you go. I apologize for all the interruptions this time around. It is uh, crazy. We are actually dry outside and um, all the adults in the family are mowing the yards and the lawns and the grounds and everything. Although the horses are in the garden, I had to let my garden kind of go a little bit. We, we harvested all that we could. And with all the rain, a lot of things became just too overly saturated. And so that's where the horses are today. They're in our gardens, mowing it down, loving every bit of it. Oh well, once we dry out, we might go ahead and, and, and plant a few more crops, but um, Otherwise, you know what? That's what you do. You just you work with the work with the weather. Maybe that's why I'm always talking about weather. Farmers and ranchers, we're always it's always about the weather. Kids are in here taking a drink. It's hot out. 
It's hot out. All right, I'm gonna let you guys go. I'm gonna stop okay, that's yakking here yeah. with you, telling you what to do. And uh, we will see you guys next week.